In this slide series, we're going to examine non-parametric tests. In brief, as summarised um, in slide series one, non-parametric tests deal with data that is classified as categorical, that is either nominal or ordinal data, and or it's data that breaks the assumption of the normal distribution. Examples of this include attitudinal scales, gender, um, income, if, if it's grouped. There are two main non-parametric tests that are used in the context of measures of association, that is measuring the strength of any relationship we have found between two variables. These are for nominal data, we use phi and Cromans V, and for ordinal data, we use Spearman's rank order. We're going to deal with each one of these um, in turn in this slide series. So phi and Cromans V. Phi is used for tables um, of dichotomous categorical variables, and uh, dichotomous is variables that have only two categories, so gender, male, female. Um, Kramer's is used for tables where um, one or both variables has two or more categories. Phi and Kramer's V are chi-squared based measures of association. Now with phi, um, the size of the chi-square coefficient um, depends on the strength of, a, of the relationship and um, the sample size. Phi eliminates um, sample size by dividing chi-square by n the sample size and um, taking the square root. Phi, phi varies between um, one, minus 1 and 1. Close to 0 it shows little or no association between variables. Close to 1 it indicates a strong positive association and close to minus 1 it shows a strong negative correlation. Cramer's V, um, the size of the chi-square coefficient depends on Again, the strength of um, the relationship and the sample size. Um, Cramer's V um, eliminates sample size by um, dividing the chi-square by n, the sample size, and taking the square root. As with phi, Cramer V varies between minus 1 and 0 0.1 and shows the same um, levels of correlation. Spearman's rank. Um, now, Pearson's correlation describes the relationship between two variables that are scale and have many different data values. Well, we have two ordinal variables, or one ordinal and one scale, and with a large number of scores we use um, Spearman's rank order. Um, Spearman's rank order can be defined as Pearson's correlation, but between ranked variables. So it has exactly the same principles um, as uh, Pearson's, except for it's based on rank order scores and not on the score data itself. Um, raw scores, they may be ordinal, okay, but rank scores are um, scale, and we transform the relationship into a linear one by using the ranks of the items rather than actual values. Um, it's concerned with um, predicting the ranking of pairs of data from independent and dependent variables. So this here is actually the equation of what Spearman's rank looks like and um, D um, is the difference in the ranks um, given to the two variables, so the values for each item of data and our N is obviously our sample size. So if we use an example, um, a physiotherapist wishes to explore whether age affects the mobility of their patients. They have recorded their patient's age as interval or, or ratio data, so it's a number. Um, they have then devised a measurement tool for mobility based on multiple measures. The so mobility score is ranked um, 1 to 15, and the lower their mobility score, the worse their mobility. So having a look at um, what data was generated from that piece of, uh, piece of research, we can see that they dealt with 16 people um, of different ages. Um, you rank on age, um, you then rank on mobility, and you then generate your um, D values, which is the difference in the ranks given the two variables, um, given the two variable values for each item of data. And if you plug that in to your Spearman's rank statistic, you can see that your um, D value ends up being 1,225.5. You're then dividing that between um, your degrees of freedom, which is actually 16 because you're dealing with 16 people, but you're dealing with the square of that minus 1. Okay, so that's uh, 
your 16 people multiplied by the square of that minus 1, okay, which is 256 minus 1, that then generates um, your spear and rank um, test statistic, which is minus 0.8. Um, now, now 0.8 um, we think of as being a very strong uh, negative correlation. We're dealing with less than 1 and we're nearly at, um, at 1, at minus 1. So therefore we're dealing with a strong correlation because it's minus, we're looking at it being um, a strong negative correlation. And that is measures of association um, for non-parametric data.